Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection March 22, 2021 Monday The Monday of the fifth week of Lent We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel chapter 13 verse 1 to 9, 15 to 17, 19 to 30 and 33 to 62. In Babylon there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven, and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual, with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said. The garden doors are shut, and no one can see us. Give in to our desire, and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped. Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked. And the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears she looked up to heaven for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man, who was hidden there, came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together. But the man we could not hold, because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. 
you know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die. Though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel. And he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel? To condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders says, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now, then, if you are a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together under a mastic tree. He answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head. For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah. Beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel. And in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now, then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak. He said. Daniel replied. Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud. Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders. For by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 23 verse 1 to 3a, 3b to 4, 5 and 6, Let our response be, Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Response. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Response. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Response. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Response. Even though I walk in the dark valley I fear no evil. For you are at my side. Verse before the Gospel. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 8 verse 1 to 11. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. 
Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel The fifth week of Lent. We are in the home stretch. Easter is just around the corner. If by now you haven't taken Lent seriously, then what are you waiting for? The good thief taught us that it's never too late to get grace and we all know we can use all the grace we can get. Have you started to annoy people? Lent is all about changing your life and making new waves. It's all about becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. And we all know that he could be quite annoying to certain people. It's true. Holy people can be very annoying. And if people are becoming annoyed with you, then don't worry. This is a good sign. Don't be alarmed. It happens a lot during Lent. You're changing. You're becoming a better Christian. Maybe you're becoming friendlier to your critics and more modest in your appearance. Maybe you're cussing less and praying more, especially before meals. This can be very annoying to work associates, friends and family who eat lunch with you. Imagine, as they start tearing into their meal, you're just beginning to do the sign of the cross. We know you're not looking for trouble. Can tables turn and what you thought to be harmless has now become offensive and egregious. Don't be alarmed. You're not the problem. Well, actually, you are. But it's not your fault. It's who you have become. They said this to test him. If you think holy people are annoying, then chances are you haven't met people who think they are holy. They can be very annoying. They're awful. And the crowd of people who commonly fall into this category are those who consider themselves to be very tolerant, even though they are assassins, to be very open-minded, especially when they are manipulative, and to be very objective, even while they whip a crowd into a frenzy. In today's Gospel passage, we read how the Pharisees and scribes dragged an adulterous woman over to Jesus for the sole purpose of having some charge to bring against him. In other words, they used a human being as a pawn to get to the Lord. Do I use people to get what I want? Do I treat people as objects at my disposal? They brought a woman to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. The Lord knew perfectly well what they were up to. This is the reason why he began to write on the ground with his finger. It's what people do when they are annoyed. They avoid eye contact and begin to play with their fingers. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. As always, the Lord turned everyone's world upside down that is, right side up, to the people who considered themselves holy. Their cover was blown with their sins exposed to the young lady who was dragged before others. Her scars were covered and her sins were blown away. Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin anymore. For us who are calculating and manipulating, 
Holy people can be very annoying. But it's not their problem. It's ours. Thank you.